bit of a quest off screen. And I think I'm just gonna go back to this. Back to the main mission. Although I still don't want to be able to explore that much of uh, Samero. I could just try to do that. But right now I just want to try to obtain even more uh, of these items. Uh, what's it called? The... Uh... Seven, I don't know where it is. <laughs> yeah, this one. Because as I'm recording right now, there's only three more days. I need that guy. Honestly. Hopefully, I can obtain it. Ad Astra Abyssosk. We meet again, you two. Hey there. Catherine, do you have any commissions for us today? Yes. What do you have? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. For what? Uh, wait, say what now? And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. What sort of commission what is that? What kind of commission is that? <laughs> I was not aware Paimon was gonna... Oh god, this is... Uh... I see... It appears that you're not interested in this commission. No. What kind in of commission case, is that? <laughs> please go to Port Armos and convince the Aramites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Barnum? <laughs> that hey, does not be what you want to do. Yes, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, please don't. I'm sure the mercenaries Stop. will have some interesting reactions as well. <laughs> uh, what is ask. it? Just how exactly <coughs> have been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Yes, who's doing oh, this? The commissioner? Mm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Good ah, for you. So it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? <sighs> From when she said, Ad Astra Abyssosk? Oh, I see. So it's been you this whole time? God damn it. <sighs> Are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways, and I even had a really, really long dream. Oh dear. It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival. Oh dear. Except it was a happy one. Was it? In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace, and everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I seen Nahida's trailer, character's trailer, and when you when I hear Nahida saying this, the first thing that comes to mind is that, and it goes from very adorable to creepy to adorable and creepy. <sighs> I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Oh dear. First, the night of flowers raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, oh, Nikita, maybe your dream is how the Subzeru's festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Yeah. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? Not no, exactly. No. We are pitying you. That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? 
How's she doing? The Homayanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yeah, yes, how is she? her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Oh, I see. The condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for I the see. moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. You got it. Right. Speaking of withering, Who I should definitely go around to my pull off another range. scheme like the Samsara of the Subzeru's festival. I'm still so trying to complete everything in Zuma. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sage's activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Well, I'll say. Oh, good point. Uh, sorry adventurers! We're gonna be borrowing <laughs> Catherine for a little while. Oh my god, Paimon's evil face. So evil. Uh, he's also kind of adorable. I cannot, I can't stay mad at that face. Let's continue our chat here. Yes, this is perfect spot. Okay. Nobody so noticed. Do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. Ooh, but nice. for now, I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. Hmm. I've already tried that, but all the key members of the Academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. Seriously? It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. So Have they you already caught you. the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet. But this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. Like In any what? case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Hmm. No way, that's too risky. You mean, it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Yeah, that kind of makes Doing sense. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? Sorry. Well, that's a good point. Spoken like the god of Tamiru. Yep. <laughs> She's already much better than the other ones. We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. Damn it, I tried all the options. What's next? Should we use the metaverse and infiltrate the sage's palace? <laughs> Damn it. After all, Ugh. every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Fuck. There's way too many. Hmm. Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, I'm pretty sure we are. You're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense. Spill the beans already. Yes, do it. Spill it. According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, and if I can't get ordinary people involved, yes. then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit okay. a spy? Hmm. I that mean, it's supposed to be that makes sense. Work. But how are we gonna do oh, that? Before coming back, we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Oh yeah, I remember. Paima remembers now. Isn't she the 
the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the sub -Zero's festival repeated itself. That's you right. You even say we're old enemies by now. <laughs> Herman I still suppose. remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm -hmm. I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. You don't say. She was born in the desert, and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the Academia, and oh. also gave her the opportunity to serve as the Sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. Well, isn't that the star kind of began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. From the sound of it, Satari has just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. It seems like it. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. Unfortunately. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the Academia every ten days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. <laughs> Again, prepare, how convenient. Let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. Alright, you got it. So let's do it. Gonna go... That one. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> This should be Sataria's favorite fortune-telling spot. Uh... So should we ask the fortune-teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Okay. Talking style and key characteristics? Let's just go with My that. poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Okay. Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh! <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding her future. Can we get a fortune reading for her? Yes, please. Hmm... <laughs> of course, of course. In that case... Yes. <laughs> Cute cats. Uh -huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Really? Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. <laughs> Which hmm. one? Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. <laughs> Do those count? Yes, mm -hmm. so those Oh, nothing. <laughs> Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Alright. Please. 
What? What's my destiny with love? And will my brother go after my lover? Love prospects? Yes. No problem at all. Um... How's my love life? <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. Go. One who is fated to cross your path will appear on... On... Huh? So... So many people will fall for you. How can that be? <laughs> it's canon. It's canon. Guys, everyone. Ciao. Ciao. Um, jolly. My boy Albero. Everyone's canon. <laughs> Thank you, pig. Alright, alright. Did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Trust me, it's not absurd. It's exactly what's going on. Everyone loves Lumina. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <laughs> See? Even Paimon knows. <laughs> The Traveler is a lover's magnet. <laughs> oh my god, my throat, I should not be laughing so much. Oh my god. Oh, stupid weather. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. Yes, that cannot be helped. <laughs> if you were to bring some food offerings for Hart and Mart on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Sure. <laughs> oh, but there you go. See? It canon. It doesn't matter who. Everyone. Everyone loves Lumine. No need to fight about it. <laughs> Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Sure. Ah, dear customers. Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Eh, who knows? Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice! You're making a living doing something you love! It is! Hmm. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. Well, that's nice I for see. him. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. Bye -bye. No problem. Rest easy. All our goods are sure to meet your every need. Ah, uh, there you go. On to the next one. This should be our final stop. Sitaria is always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! Well, she is the god of wisdom. <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samira citizens, after all. Aww. Hi there. I feel like 
like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, oh, that's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Leeway Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study, but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But oh. I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. Well, good luck with what that. An admirable spirit for learning. Amazing. Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. That is true. So this restaurant has a basement as well. Yet to do that. Huh. First, I've heard of it. That's yeah, right. Be... It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. Huh. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. Well, there you go. So, what now? What's the plan? So, was that everybody? Mm hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember you mentioned that the Aramites in Port Ormuz are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of King Deshret. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, oh I see. Oh, Hyman gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages! Hmm... So, how do we set that up? Yeah, how do well, we do that? King Dashrit is long gone, and Sitaria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of King Dashrit's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, okay, if we were point. to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, uh -oh. her reaction would probably be very different. So, I see. you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply they've already converted to the faith of King Deshret, and then convey our made-up will of King Deshret. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. I mean, ah, so that's she's not wrong. To use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that we'll you won't slip up and break up. form. Possessing them like will that. only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Pardon? Huh? Best of luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. Okay, that's that convenient. That is pretty convenient. But why does she have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. Is that so? You're not it's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. Yeah, it's quite obvious. Remember that thing in the market? What's so obvious it was not Catherine? Uh, if it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah. yeah we can apologize later. Right? We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing 
keeping them for a little while anyway. All right, then let's give her the gold tomorrow afternoon. It still feels wrong, afternoon. but it's for the best. Well, it's not like we're gonna sacrifice these three people. And there she is. <laughs> oh, here she comes. Satori is here. Let's quietly follow her. Once she starts talking to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. As you for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Uh, I'm not starting to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. That is messed That's up. right. You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, oh. everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <sighs> okay, then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. <laughs> oh, dear. It's okay. Strange. Nice kitty. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Uh, these his names are Hartu and Martu. Ah, oh, that's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. Ahem. <clears throat> so, which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Oh dear. So she... Well, she's all about love. Um, could you do a reading on how long it'll <laughs> take mom. me to finish my current project at work? I really <laughs> just want to get it over with. <laughs> I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Oh, I'm for um, you. Should probably go and ask. <laughs> Sorry, your new laugh is just so hilarious. I couldn't help it. Excuse me. Oh, uh, please pay no mind to those kinds of details. The gods are Oops. asking. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Holy Why shit. haven't you I gone home? Oh, you guys Do noticed the, the really know everything I've been thinking about? Like I was trying to say, you guys noticed this change of face she did? Holy shit, Lumine. Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And, if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Do it. Do it. Hm. What an inconsiderate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all. King oh, wow. Deshret. G King Deshret? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Uh huh. Wait a second. King Deshret passed away a long time ago. Even though news of King Deshret's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the academia. How can Pardon? King Deshret still exist in real life? Huh. What insolence! I am King Deshret's most loyal believer. 
Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! Oh, dear. <laughs> nice. She just ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset, too. Well done. Sataria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her? That must have shaken her to the core. I can only imagine. Aww, but also... Nihira, it seems like you understand human emotions really well after all. All I know are some abstract Haribo taught theories. In any case, my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Oh, Nahida. But putting that aside, so apparently the academia, academia is the one in, behind the rumors about King, whatever his name is. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Yeah, let's do it. On to the next one. Which is now. right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away. Here goes nothing. In voila. I'm in. <laughs> it's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Oh, right. Your old man's craft. How could I forget? Hey, it's okay. Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Oh, that's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yes, he yeah. is. He's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Let him know that recently, faith in King Deshret has taken root in Port Ormos, and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those King Deshret believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia, or King Deshret? Uh... I... <laughs> <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert, yet you chose to betray King Deshret, and now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. I'm not choosing Akim, any of these. You don't it's mean... Amazing. You've the also become a believer of King Deshret? Not... What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Hey, now we go. I would have no idea you'd be so good at this! <laughs> you really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. Yeah, that was nuts. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. Yes, please do. We are just drumming in on her. I'm just a little bit sorry about her. Come on! Sataria's already... Yes, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go again. So... She's Sean. Have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Oh, right. Speaking of strange things, I celebrated the Subzerus festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? 
That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. <laughs> Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Chishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to King Deshret as well! <laughs> oh, what an absurd fun. question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Ooh, getting rough. Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. <laughs> Did you push too hard? What the... I mean, that was definitely nuts. She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's Let's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? Possess the guards! This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Yes, Mercenary, I'm ready. You're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? <laughs> what kind of heresy are you talking about? King Deshred! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Zataria, nothing is impossible. Y you know my name? <laughs> King Deshret is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. You must face <laughs> the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of King Deshret, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? Oh dear. What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. <laughs> okay, maybe we did push her too hard. Why haven't you gone home? Oh dear. Oh shit. Seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of King Deshret. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore and get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of King Deshret? Or are you the god himself? Who That's knows? not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, Perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. Yes, do it. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated yes, opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? <clears throat> How much do you know about the sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city. What? And even the sages are still quite wary of him. That's interesting. To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? Yes, can we it do this? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. 
After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Hmm. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow <laughs> evening at the Academia entrance. Of course. The Academia entrance. Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm it only better. suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. Mm-hmm. Hold on. 